Don't do that. <laughs> All right. We're rolling so this now. is part two of episode, I think, what, 17? I think that sounds about right. Yeah. We're actually, we're going to have, a, you know, uh, Chris Bonghead, right? Mm-hmm. We, um, quick mention, he's going to be on our uh, next episode. Weird, weird fucking thing how everybody knows each other. I was going to mention it earlier, but uh, Kelly, my fiance, she's like best friends with him for like years. Really? She grew up like, she grew up uh, across the street from him. Oh, that's awesome. I love Chris. He's yeah. great. Yeah, yeah. He. Uh, it's funny, actually, that's what, um, one of the few t- first times I met Kelly, we were over there and uh, everybody fucking hated me and said, don't ever go out with that fucking drug dealer. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> because uh, I cannot like of of all of anybody who's got issues problems whatever their bullshit i cannot stand alcoholics because my dad was a huge fucking drunk oh well, hi be- <laughs> and, yeah yeah and be- good thing and, I'm, I'm sober though yeah yeah, yeah. so so you're good yeah you're, you're our good. kind <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah but but uh sh- um i wanted to get high and kelly didn't want to so she was drinking and so my solution was put a bucket on her as a necklace and leave the party go ahead you fucking keep hurling get the fuck away from me so like yeah don't what, don't go out with probably, me. she was pretty inebriated yeah like, she was pretty inebriated yeah she yeah uh, it was like but did she find that f- humorous and funny in some way it's, it's funny now but, <laughs> but she did not find it funny then no because oh, yeah, she was <laughs> yeah. like fuck you buddy yeah no i mean even the day after she's like why did you why did you leave what the hell you know like, like sorry yeah <laughs> so <laughs> how i exist so wait, all of her friends told her not to go out with you and then yeah. she wound up with you yeah do you think it's because you're a bad boy i think so man <laughs> the, the, the drug dealing bucket slinging <laughs> filthy philip that's yep. right <laughs> yeah and it's it's weird love it's weird works in good. mysterious ways yeah because yeah. it could have swung you know in every horrible direction i mean i don't know but it worked out you're getting married it's going to be great yeah we're going to amsterdam that's right have oh, you yeah. have you ever been? I have actually never been on an airplane. Really? Yeah, I've only gone on vacation once, and we drove maybe maybe like twice when I was a little kid, and don't even remember. Where did you go? Um, we went to Florida uh, because my sister had a volleyball tournament. She was for mm-hmm. one of her club volleyball teams, and we drove from uh, Joliet, <clears throat> Illinois, all the way down through like Tennessee and shit, and stopped mm-hmm. and saw some family there. Did you stop at all the weird souvenir shit? Oh yeah, I got uh, in Florida actually. I got two souvenirs. I got a um, formaldehyde jar with a baby shark in it. Ooh, and, <laughs> oh nice! And then um, I got a trucker hat that I wish I still had, but it was this bright red trucker hat with yellow lettering on it and a picture of a truck. And it just said, "Don't tell my parents I uh, I'm a truck driver. They think I play piano at a whorehouse on Bourbon Street." <laughs> oh nice! And I, I saw that at like 13. I'm like, "That is awesome." I'm perfect. Was like, Here's ten dollars. Buy the fucking hat, <laughs> dude. I, I I recently was like hat shopping, and I I'm like, oh, this is gonna fucking humor the wrong crowd. Even though it makes me laugh, I wanted to get like you know like the MAGA hats, but mm-hmm. it says "Make me a sandwich" instead oh. of, and I don't know if that's like wait MAGA. No, they like, actually they make America great again. Oh, got it. But yeah, just... there's a um, a MAGA hat parody that just says "Make America Gay Again." Yeah, <laughs> it's like, oh, if I wouldn't get my ass beat for wearing a hat that looked like it, <laughs> my God, I would wear that. Right. I, I like how any make hat will get your ass beat. Well, yeah, much, I mean, you know, it's. It's, Let's make some pizza rolls. Yeah, you know? <laughs> if if it looks like it and people can't read it, like yeah, I I'm nearsighted, so like if I see somebody with that hat, like from like further away than you and i'm like yeah oh, motherfucker <laughs> but like they get it close like oh yeah no pizza rolls yeah i fucking love pizza rolls yeah let's make more pizza rolls again <laughs> my uh, uh gavin uh my stepkid his his ma's uh or his friend's ma um she kind of like did did got to that point where she doesn't know if to trust me that well because um coming from a polish community i love that shirt it, it, it's like old school in every heavy metal magazine it's it's the pope holding a joint and it says i like the pope the pope smokes dope <laughs> and so i answered the door with that and she's super poly- oh i really like your sh- uh what is oh this? no i oh, have a good day <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> okay <laughs> i leave now yeah. thank you <laughs> right. yeah so you cannot hang out with him <laughs> yeah. he's evil man no, i thought people loved it at the parent teacher meetings everything the pta meetings now they're not yeah, a big fan yeah. of the Dude, speaking of conference being, oh man, like fucking, so we went, um, I keep, like it's driving me nuts because nobody will understand me until they're dad, but it's fucking, <laughs> no, no, like dude, it's fucking, it's it's so weird because all, 
I like like there's there's no there's no social life in there because all the parents there are older than me, so they think I'm some crazy fuck. I can't like small talk with anybody, and then like even the conference thing, just coming in like even if I came in there, dressed you know and fucking looking like I'm a Cubs fan, Sperry shoes and shirt and tie, they still think you're weird because just being young. I'm like, oh yeah, we know this guy was an accident or something, you know. So it's like, it's so weird for me to be like are, is she treating me like i'm a young parent or like a regular parent type shit mm-hmm. and we went and gavin like what's bothering me is i don't know how to make him not go down the downward spiral because he's just been like not paying attention getting bad grades not trying to do better and you've been hitting him right you've tried that i t- i mean it doesn't work anymore man <laughs> in different times don't give up <laughs> don't give up that's what the study show yeah i mean i don't know i t- you move from yardstick to electric cord to, I mean. Yeah, no, it seems like you've done everything. Yeah, I mean. So what did the teacher say? No, well, no. So what happened is now it's, I mean, he's, he, uh, they give him like these little, uh, I don't know. I think it's fucking, st- I think it's fucking stupid. I think kids need to be ranked to motivate him. Like, you know, are you doing the, you know how it's like, what is a no child left behind shit? Mm-hmm. So he gets like a pencil with a little note of like a compliment each week of what he's doing better. And he keeps getting them. And then the teacher calls us saying he's more disconnected. I'm like, bitch, if he's fucking getting good grades, keep that disconnect, okay? Like, who gives... I he I don't know. She, she said he's more disconnected. Hmm. I don't know what the fuck that... And it's so hard to take her seriously because she has, like, this KRS one nose. It's really... <laughs> I don't know. It's. I mean, she like. Like, I don't. I'm not being racist. She's white, but it's just like, that's the only big thing nostrils. I'm staring at. The whole yeah, big right. nose. Like the whole fucking thing. I'm staring at that. Hearing whoop whoop. That's the sound of the police. You know, like <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> and, and I'm like, oh, he's disconnected. Okay. Uh, please explain. You know, like, mm-hmm. I, yeah. What does uh, that mean, teacher? Yeah, I don't know. And she doesn't. She she says that he, uh, like. So the way, so yeah, th- that's what sucks. Like how many fucking stories you have to go through. He told me that he got put in a, so you get like science projects, like you get like five options and for some reason they let the kids roam free, like which project you want to join. So it's like, oh, I don't like that kid cause he's got a weird mall. So I'm going to join this group or something. And so they let the kids pick. So they don't, none of the kids want to be with Gavin cause he's like shy. But then none of the kids want to be with the fucking asshole redneck anger management kid. Right. So they get put in a group together. Uh-oh. And suddenly, like, you know. Now well, he's disconnected. Yeah, yeah. G- Gavin will be like, oh, well, I think we should do things this way. No! That's so stupid! I'm doing it this way! Yeah, but we're not going to get a good grade. It's like, no! You know, and it's like, he's not, he's obviously trying to make that connection with somebody who's fucking raging you know is he uh is he very intelligent like is he actually a really smart kid he's he's real good in like reading i mean and reading and writing but he might not be getting (laughs) challenged enough like yeah yeah there there's an issue with like um kids who learn quicker and are a little like smarter like for lack of a better term than most other kids like kids who are more advanced in their learning yeah when they have to learn slower with other kids it they become bored. Yeah. Like if something isn't challenging the kid, they just are like, Why should I even try? It's so easy. Yeah. And then after a few years it's like, uh oh, I didn't pay attention enough because I wasn't challenged. Now I don't understand yeah. anything. So now you have to Why catch even up. like either I catch up and try harder, but most kids just go, I don't fucking care anymore. I'm not gonna try. Like I ended up doing that like not to toot my own horn, but I was a smart kid. I grew up yeah. very smart. I tested very well in a lot of the standardized testing. And for a long time it was just like I enjoyed learning But after like a while, you become so fucking bored. You're like, I got this on day one. And like half the class is going to take a couple more days. And then there's going to be the other kids who are probably just as smart as I am, but don't learn quickly. They can learn slower and need a different pace. And it's like, I'm stuck. No, I just got to wait for everyone else. And I, I, I don't want to wait, so I'm not even going to pay attention. I'm just going to go off and do my own thing and not care, and who gives a shit if I have bad grades because I already know this stuff. Like, I would get in arguments with teachers, like, I already know this. Why do I have to do this? And they're yeah. like, because you have to do this. 
You have to take the test. You have to answer the questions. You have to do the homework Mm -hmm. because that's how you show me. And then I give you the grade and then everyone's fine. I know that you know this. Everyone in this fucking classroom knows that you know this. (laughs) Sit down, Cameron. Yeah, yeah. You are smarter (laughs) than everyone here. We get it. No, I was. There was. I'm. That's. that's, Yes, I was smarter than every other child. I am smarter than all children. Yeah, but like, there there comes a point where it's just like if you're not challenging, you know, certain kids in some way, either by like giving them something that's hard for them or giving them something that intrigues them in the way they want to learn. Yeah, they're just gonna fucking click out, and they're done. And like that's how kids end up being like, oh, they were such a promising young student. Why did they just start doing stupid shit? Good like, kids, because, yeah, horrible, good, bad, bad Like adults. They end up doing stupid shit, uh, and it's because they weren't challenged in yeah. any way. E- whether it be just like, you have to do this, or like, how do you want to do this? How can we help you want to do this? Yeah, And it's th- not catering I, to go, oh, this special little kid needs help. It's like, yeah, all kids need individual attention, mm-hmm. and they don't need to be treated like fucking sunflowers that are super special but you need to take into account that every kid has a different way of learning and every kid learns at a different pace and some kids just aren't going to understand something yeah and some kids are going to understand it so well that they're done with it so you have to like give a kid a reason to want to be challenged and to want to succeed yeah in an effort to just go do your best and not just like spoil them when they're the best student either like they found that Students who are continually told they're so smart and so great and they're so good at things, they end up worse off when they're told that they're so smart and shit because they become reliant on that being told that, that when they can't do a thing, they think less of themselves. Yeah. They're like, oh, but I'm this, I'm so smart and I'm so special and so good. Why can't I do this thing? It's because not everybody can do everything, man. Like, yeah. you can't get so down on yourself. And like, when that's implanted in a kid's head, they start defeating themselves because, it's like, if I am smart, why can't I do this? I must be stupid. Why should I try? Mm-hmm. Because kids are very complex. They're <laughs> human beings being formed from the get go, so they're still learning who they are and how they learn and what they like. And it's going to change and evolve because they're fucking growing. Yeah. So that. Like that sounds like he just It's the balance, man. It's yeah, the it's a balance. balance of just going, You're working hard, you can work harder, we're going to help you, we want you to do better and we want you to want to do better. Yeah. And <clears throat> sometimes you're gonna have to do things you don't want to do because you have to do them. And sometimes you can do the things you wanna do the way you wanna do them. So you have to just it's a delicate balance of just yeah. going, Do you need to be challenged or do you need help? Like, don't be afraid of either. Don't be say like, don't be afraid to go. You know what? I know this shit. Like, how can I keep myself involved? Or you know what? I don't understand this, and it's gonna be hard for me. Yeah, I'm willing to say that's, I need help. That, that's what's making me like feel so bad because I'm like, we put him in a swimming class, and I'm like, mm-hmm. listen, you will get your video games back if you learn. If I can throw you in the twelve foot section and you're swimming, and he's just like, he got used to just not having video games. So yeah. then we signed up for like Taekwondo and <clears throat> I mean, I finally motivated him. <clears throat> I realized like, I don't know, man, like I've had so much energy ever since I started exercising more. So finally like taking my time to teach cause I get home at like six and I work mm-hmm. since 5 a.m. So it's like, I never had a time for the energy and I finally like teaching him. I'm like, dude, I never realized, you know, like when he's in class and he's moves any limbs, it looks like a drunk person falling down the stairs or like a toddler trying to walk mm-hmm. because like he's not paying attention to it. And I finally taught him. And I mean, it was really awkward because he's like crying, doing jumping jacks right away. But I'm like, look, you finally got it right. You finally got it. You know, like, mm-hmm. but yeah, man, it's, I don't know. I'm just saying it's tough. Yeah, it is. It's, but I couldn't, but I couldn't pay attention to anything with that fucking teacher. She, and yeah. she, her Steven no, Tyler what? bracelets <laughs> all over her fucking <laughs> KRS one <laughs> knows Steven Tyler yeah. bracelets. <laughs> I mean, I, I, yeah, I'm like, it's 2018. Like, you're, you're supposed to look hot, not like <laughs> the teachers. Like, oh, man, but I know I remember some of my old teachers, dude. Like, I don't know. What, being being attractive? No, I, I remember, no, not being, I, I remember there was a guy who. Having noses of different hip-hop I rem- artists? There, there was, dude, my, t- I, that's the funny thing is the more fucked up they wore, were, the more like inside joke there was among kids to fuck with them. Mm-hmm. I remember there was like a Mrs. Suker who she, 
looked her face looked like she was a burn victim and she'd oh, get always Jesus mad and she she she'd threaten the kids with specifically a rubber hammer she'd go if you don't do this i'm getting out my rubber hammer and she'd like just pull out her desk it, like pull her shelf out and put a rubber hammer on the desk oh, Jesus. Dude. All right. i i used to have a teacher um in eighth grade and like a couple other grades before that but like he was this very old dude is the only dude teacher in our entire school like really good really smart guy but like, he had a very weird way of talking and like would always have these odd threats like not like pervy threats but just like weird threats of like yeah like just shut up and pay attention yeah. and he like he'd come up to you like he'd grab you like by the neck if you're misbehaving like like on the on your shoulders like mr little what's so funny about the word boner and you're just like <laughs> don't say it and like i, I remember i i got I was like 14 and we were talking about uh, political redistricting um, yeah. and like changing districts based on population shit. Like, it was gerrymandering. Gerrymandering. And I had never heard the term gerrymandering before. And I'm 14. So, of course, my brain just goes, masturbation. <laughs> gerrymandering. Oh, oh. And I, I just like I start s- laughing. And my teacher was like, Mr. Little. Why are we laughing at gerrymandering? And I'm just like <laughs> laughing more because he's saying it weird. And he's just like, Mr. Little, I'm going to take you outside, rough you up. And it's just like, God damn it. Right. Oh. So a note to all of our listeners out there, never send your kids to Catholic schools. No, no, no. 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 <laughs> Horrible. Send your kids to public school and also pay more in taxes so you can help fund the school and then help to get more funding to those yeah. schools so those kids don't get lost and teachers get paid more and the class sizes can be smaller so your kids can get help. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. And no, do you, some volunteer work. Why not? Yeah, and volunteer. Well, yeah. No, dude, I remember how awkward and f- and even m- – see, these situations, the ridiculous situations we always escalate. Like that same day, that same week I get caught for looking up a chick's skirt because it's right in front of me. <laughs> I go to fucking guitar class afterward. And we had this old school fucking nun, dude. She was like missing teeth and looked like a giraffe. And she would fucking hit your hand with a yardstick if you messed up the chords. And she's like, oh, Philip Philip doesn't know how to do this song. Why don't you go in front of the class? And it was like the nicest looking girl in class. And what do you know? Like guitar spread. And I'm just like, fuck, I just got over this. She's like, how do I... Like get, get yeah. uh, what? Is, what? What? What's? What's like the weapon of choice for this nun when she sees my fucking boner? Sure. Yeah. So your mind immediately goes to gerrymandering. I don't. I still don't know what the fuck that means. I, I, I forgot. Yeah. It's um masturbating. Per, it's yeah, slang it's, for masturbating. It? It's 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 personally <laughs> pleasuring yourself by redistricting the size of your district to maximize the amount of votes towards your party. Okay. It's, yeah, I was it's literally say, I, I, changing the size of a district okay. or the locations of certain parts of districts that vote so you can keep maximizing your votes. But to a 14-year-old boy, it sounds like a synonym for masturbating. Yeah. It's it's moving stuff around to pleasure yourself so yeah. you get the most I, out of it. I forgot what that meant. I don't know when I forgot, and I kept thinking it was like... You know, like Alzheimer's is named after a person's name. I thought it was named someone... Gerrymandering? Gerrymander. <laughs> Gerrymander? Sure, yeah. Well... I don't know where the actual term came from, but that's yeah. what it means. It's it's purposeful redistrict redistricting to get more votes. Yeah, probably some like 1920s slang, like you know, like oh Hoovervilles and yeah. these carpet baggers coming here gerrymandering the entire state. That's what are you gonna do when the engines come round? <laughs> the bindle stiffs, a slick and mug. Yeah, <laughs> mud, not mud. The dust bowls got us all mixed up. <laughs> Yeah, uh, simpler times. <laughs> FDR is gonna fix it with his Hoover Dam Initiative. <laughs> ah, see, and things have never been better. <laughs> things have never been better for everyone here in America. The not too distant future, the year 1954. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that's gerrymandering. Yeah. So, um, I just yeah, I'm I'm I can't believe I can't believe like there's random words like that where I didn't. I don't know. That my my brain works a different way. It's it's the what same way like when you do it's the same like when I'd be in history class and we're talking about the slavery period, but then you talk about it in religion class, it's like, oh wait a minute. Like which wait are these the same slaves we're talking about? You know? <laughs> no. You're like, Oh wait. Hang on. Slaves have happened forever? Yeah. I, I'm just oh, saying fuck. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, oh, I'm wait, just so I'm, like you were thinking, like the people that built the pyramids are the same ones yeah, that yeah. were working like cotton plantations. Oh, it was great! <laughs> yeah, it, it was great. They build pyramids in, in the seventeen hundred, right? It's like, how old are these people? Right. Yeah. <laughs> wow, slavery sure does suck. Right. You live yeah. forever. Your job gets increasingly worse. Why did My they God. do this? 
why would anyone want this? <laughs> no, thank you. No slavery for me. <laughs> yeah. I am not a fan of slavery. Mm-mm. They go from architecture to just farm work. And dude, you know, th- that shit's like more, like, that's even more of a complicated issue. Like, what if you're a kid and you're in a class? How do you fucking explain that to little kids? You know, and, and there's. What, some- slavery? Yeah, I don't think it's a topic that should be taught that young because there, there may be someone who down the line had a sla- what you know, had slave enslaved family. I I don't know. I think it's kind of like a cringy It's weird a thing. delicate thing to slowly open up someone to how awful history has been. Yeah. Like I remember like growing up and like you get history as a kid. Yeah. And for the majority of history, you're like, yes, some bad stuff has happened, but here's all the great things people have done over time. And like, I think that's a good way of kind of pushing a kid into human history of going like, oh, this is when things were invented. And here's when, oh, this happened. And oh, it was a glorious move. And this people moved to here. And it's yeah, very yeah. simple history. But like, I remember like getting like to 13 and 14 and starting like investigating more history myself. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then like, I remember like just walking out to my parents after <laughs> reading like a book and I was just like, are you aware of how horrible people are? <laughs> and my parents just have to look at me like, yeah, dude, people fucking suck. And they always have. And they, they probably don't fucking always tell will. you. They, they, don't. they don't tell you. You're like, wait, we just murdered and raped all the time forever. <laughs> and you're like, yeah, no, that's pretty much how it's all been. We're still trying to stop that. And you're like, and you just brought me into this world. <laughs> yeah, first, first you tell me Santa Claus isn't real, and now this is real. Like, like, not only is Santa Claus not real, but the toys you buy me are made by kids my age. <laughs> Holy shit! I'm like, yeah, dude. Sorry. I'm like, do you want like, I don't know. Do you want a cookie or something? You want to just forget about it for a bit? I'm like, yeah, I do. I would like to forget for like an hour. Just at how horrible humans have always been. Yeah. And I remember like the first time I learned that the term slave came from Slav. Oh, I didn't. I didn't yeah. know that. The term slave meant Slav because uh, the first use of the term slave was Slavs that were used as indentured servants, essentially, in Eastern Europe and in the Middle East. Oh huh. yeah, so you were as low as a Slav, you were a slave, <laughs> and like that, that the term etymo- etymologically came from Slav, and like for a while, Slavic people were like, I refuse to use the term slave, because it's uh, equating all uh, marginalized and detrimental effects to people to the Slavs to the Slavs. Like, I remember hearing that. I'm like, wait, I'm of Slavic. <gasps> <gasps> just like yeah. losing my mind and then it's like wait okay no all right it's a word words evolve whatever fuck it stupid right uh, yeah. uh, all slavery is bad no matter what the fucking term comes yep. from yeah. like, it's all shit yep it's like yeah any anytime i see a you know like some some overly represented like white white kid making white jokes but white dem- i'm like let me slip my 23 me towards you i'm a slav <laughs> you know, like, it's like oh you're just western european my people were subjugated, and you let it happen. Yeah. <laughs> but what about everyone else who had subjugation? Like, yeah, 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 yeah. I know, I get it. I, my, mine's, mine's not as bad. Mine's not as Dude, bad. Not as bad. My family's blood is on your hands, my stranger. My impression is nearly not as bad as yours. Dude, 23 <laughs> Me is so goofy. We, we, we did an episode on it where, like, because uh, most people are like, all right, so you either find your, you know, like, your race ancestry and your health. Oh, my God, I'm Polish. Dude, no, that, that fucking list that was ridiculous, like, you're 11% more likely to not be able to do a cartwheel. According to our, and then you know you're thirteen percent more to think that basil smells like yogurt or some shit. Yeah, uh, there. I I refuse to do the twenty three and me what? one because you can take it multiple times and get a variation in results because yeah. the way that they're copywritten in the way they do them, so they have a certain way of testing them that can yeah. end up having a variation in results. But also they sell off the information. Yeah. Hmm. To whom? To insurance to companies, anyone probably. anyone who wants the information. Yeah, to health insurance. Literally anyone can take that if, information. If, if, you got, if you got, like, say, epilepsy or a visual impairment in your health history, mm-hmm. then they will be able to judge, like, what say, like, your child's health insurance. Easy. Yeah, so your DNA becomes information. It's yeah. commodified information because everything about you is commodified from the moment you're born to the moment you will die. Oh, beautiful, for oh, spacious sky. Oh, God damn it. <laughs> Right. That was nice. That was good. Normally, people don't sing along. <laughs> oh, yeah. no, I'm all about it. Uh, one of my favorite things to do is to drink too much on the show and then try and 
uh, persuade our guests into singing. <laughs> had a pretty good success rate. Last yeah. episode, I think it was you and I both sang, and this was the first. Yeah. The guest and I did a duet. Thank yeah. you. That, that it's always lovely. great when right. Ross tries to do German uh, accents, though, right? That, uh, <laughs> among among his talents, that ranks highly. Yeah, he's he's got a knack for it. I was actually listening to um, a program about how I th- I think I may have told you this, Bill, but it was how it's interesting that the reason why companies like Tesla cannot move forward with technology is because of like how you're saying that oh they you know they take all this information from you, well scientifically this plus this equals this so i don't know for example like me i'm not going to grow up to be a fucking basketball player not with that attitude well so so what's crazy is the the experiment they were doing is um i forgot what it was oh it was about uh driverless cars and it was about Mm -hmm. how like so say i i I told this to bill and i I wonder what you'll say so say you're a jew in world war ii and you got think of like 15 most loved people that you have Mm. You're stuck in the basement, and you have your child, who's who's not even a year old, about to cry, and you're hiding in the basement. Would you kill the baby, or 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 would you and and uh you know save everybody, or would you let them kill everybody and let them cry? Man, that's a tough question to spring on someone on yeah, yeah. live air. No, it's crazy. It's you crazy. don't have to answer that if you yeah, don't. Yeah, yeah, you don't. <laughs> that's a, that is a that's one of the like, the ethical argument things. Like, what are you willing to do in order for the like the quote unquote greater good? Yeah, and, like, yeah. There's there's the things that get more complex. Is like just because you kill the kid, you can't guarantee that everyone else is going to live. But like the hypothetical says, because you kill the kid, yeah. you save everyone. Well, well, yeah, yeah. According to those two, like uh, uh, basically what the analysis was that if you choose kill the kid. Your brain is more uh, towards logic, but then if you, you know, let it let it live, then you're more towards feeling. And 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 the thing was that they they put these people they put fMRIs on these people's brains, which is like a video of mm-hmm. your brain instead of an MRI. And it actually like you look at the brain, and it looks like a fucking Braveheart, like mm-hmm. it's fighting what decision to do because this is so messed up. Mm-hmm. And uh, the, it was about how so what do you program these fucking uh, drivers? to prioritize Mm -hmm. because eventually like with the updates and everything they're the the cars are going to communicate with each other so it's going to be like you know well this guy's an 80 year old uh, you know fucking white guy owner of a company he's got billions of dollars and he's driving his tesla if he keeps going he's gonna demolish a school bus with 15 fucking small kids or it could go out of the way smash to a wall and kill the guy Mm -hmm. what's prioritized and it, yeah, and well, it, that's that's what becomes more complex with those ethical questions. Is like, yeah. yes, most people go, I'd save the kids and kill the one guy. They're like, but what if that one guy is on like the brink of discovering something that will change yeah. the world forever and for the better? And all those kids are just normal little kids that wouldn't do anything. Yeah, and it's just like okay, the more then, variables and, you start adding, the more yeah, you're like, how many people do I have to kill to save the best thing? And and, and the more variables you add, the more controversial it comes because they were saying like, what if what if this dude is rich and contributory to society, but say he's some fucking not like like yeah. leader of the KKK, and this school bus is. Full of assholes. Uh, f- 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 full of, like, uh, you know, kids from the ghetto who are impoverished. Yeah. Well, the computer could say, well, this guy's more contributory, and they're never going to grow up to be contributory to society, according to statistics. statistics. yeah. But at the same time, like, he's obviously doing shit for hate. You know, you get what I'm saying. Like, Yeah, it, no, it's... It's fucking crazy. That is <laughs> the one of the fundamental problems of AI, is the nebulous idea of morality you can't uh like program morality yeah. into machines like that was the problem uh, in um and with asimov and all of his robotics like the laws of robotics mm-hmm. like how do you program a moral code because morals are fluid they move like the yeah, other stuff that everyone agrees on but the more complex and more variables there become the harder the equation becomes to solve and be agreed upon so there's multiple answers from multiple perspectives and it, you can't program multiple choices right. from a one solid command. Yeah. And that's why AI becomes so complex. It's like, how do we code the uncodable? Or at least right now, the uncodable decision of morality in a car. Yeah. Like, I've seen some of the like the returns and results are like, they prioritize animals least, 
over humans and then it's like well by what type of animal people really like dogs or if it's endangered yeah Yeah, what if it's an endangered animal you (coughs) you have to program animal identification into an ai to stop a car from hitting an eagle over a fucking child but what if that's the last eagle that could save that species that could also help save our ecosystem yeah does that kid matter more than the ecosystem because that one eagle potentially could save us like Yes, you don't want the kid to die. And almost everyone will go, fuck it, just save the kid. But like, yeah, one kid dying or the planet. Kill the kid, maybe. I don't know. Yeah. There's so much shit to it. Yeah. Like, I even feel bad things. Just fucking kill the kid. Just well, fucking yeah, yeah. shoot the kid. Then don't even have... let him get hit by the car. Shoot the kid before the car can even do anything. <laughs> right. <laughs> then yeah. everyone's fine. And, and, and then there's the dilemma of how do you do a drive-by in a Tesla? Right? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> A provocative question. Who do you blame it on? <laughs> Special job. Go down this road from this road and then hit the fucking gas. Get out of there. Oh, I also right. just saw something. I can't remember. And it doesn't look as badass doing a drive. If it was like a robotics like company, or it was like popular science or something. They came out with like a. Uh, they did a study of people. Um, and like I said, always quoting studies is stupid. Like that's a whole other thing. But they're like the mm-hmm. with the advent of more driverless vehicles, sex in vehicles will go up. Because people just go, oh, hell yeah. well, the car's driving. I'm just going to fuck in the back. That's yeah. right. And they're like, Roadhead. The whole world is wide open to Roadhead now. <laughs> because it's beautiful. Like, I got a Tesla. Let's suck and fuck until we get to McDonald's. It's not That's the right. same. It's it's, the danger is the, not yeah, the same. The added right? element of going, oh, 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 geez. Oh, boy. Oh, oh, I don't know. All right. So, hey, I'm going to revisit that like moral prioritizing thing. Yeah. Because all the cars are communicating, right? Yeah, yeah, because they're constantly going to be updating information on like what's well, because because that's the thing, like the th- the the whole thing. How I said how like oh, this is an eighty year old r- prominent rich fuck, and then this is a school bus. The, these cars have those characteristics programmed in them uh, right. of the owners. So wouldn't they also have like trajectory information and like the mass and like if they are self driving vehicles, wouldn't they be able to like yeah, communicate they, to each other and be like, hey, instead of having to choose between killing your guy with that wall or killing these kids why don't we just like you slow down and then i'll go a little faster yeah yeah well that level of communication needs to be almost instantaneous and it has to be predicted like you have to have the predictability of information for the ai to do that you know when that's almost impossible to go like what if someone is in the middle of a self-driving thing and they go you know what i need to drive because i need to do this like i have to reprogram and i need to change on a second and that's why a lot of people are adamantly against self-driving cars is like the freedom of driving yourself of being able to take yourself and make decisions and do those things and go you know what instead of turning left here i'm going to turn left there self-driving car is going to put you in situations you normally wouldn't be in and then it's like the liability changes the the the, the information the car has changes and then the, the information changes on the dot and then a car has to communicate that to the rest of the cars and that's not including the fact that there can be disturbances in communication and lapses in communication because it's coded by humans yeah so someone could mess up the coding and that code could change one little fucking thing in the binary code and absolutely change how all the cars communicate and fuck everything up and then kill more people yeah we have yeah. to kill that kid it, yeah it's we something. just gotta we gotta yeah. kill john connor plus yeah yeah right i hear he <laughs> really? was disconnected I was, just, I was just about to bring that up <laughs> like that's like the scare that that shit everything i that scared the fuck out of me when i was a kid i love now and like t2 mm-hmm. is fucking great like yeah. that's j- j- as like technology like they, they were saying too like as technology keeps like furthering and and getting better and better is that like you think right now, oh, machines won't destroy us because they're thinking of the actual Terminator yeah. movie. Yeah. They're like, dude, they're not gonna have legs. They're yeah. not. They're not gonna like. They're gonna have wheels. <laughs> they can go over access everything. Access to right. infrastructure. Yeah. And they're gonna food take supply. care of the job. You know? Yeah. Like, <clears throat> I, I'm fascinated by the idea of AI and communication and digital like minds and hive minds and shit. But also the same like. I'm kind of like traditional because I'm just like a good old-fashioned fleshy human, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I like a human that makes mistakes and can do things, and the human element of behavior is far more uh, important to me than the sophistication of a machine that if one fucking solar flare goes <coughs> by the, the side of the planet, we're fucked forever. Like, I remember a few years ago seeing information about solar storms and this was like maybe in 2012, I think it was, or 2012 or 2013. Ooh, 2012. Yeah, and they're like, <laughs> a year 
prior to that, they had gotten results from solar storms on the sun and like mm. seeing the intensity of what happens there to un further understand our solar system. And they said that we were on the opposite side of the sun from a massive solar storm that was having like solar ray bursts and like UV bursts and shit that had we been on that side of the sun when that happened, all major communications and uh, like technological systems would have been destroyed in like minutes. Weird. And we would have been set back technologically by like almost a century. Huh. All major infrastructure would collapse. All yeah. information, social security information would be gone. All Bank business, accounts. everything would have been wiped out. Systems that help supply our food, our cars would be functionless. Our cell phones would be functionless. Like electronics in and of themselves would have been functionless for decades. And that would have set us back hundreds of years. And like that would have been catastrophic. Maybe, maybe though, with the way shit is, maybe we need a reboot. Hey, no? man, learn to swim, as the tool says. <laughs> yeah. Wait. <laughs> What do you mean the way things are? Well, well, well no, with uh, like, uh, you know, because, I mean, it's fucking proven how much like this furthering of technology and how much, it, how much the brain can take in and retain. Maybe we need a fucking reboot to simpler ways. I mean, <laughs> it, it's like I said, it's always I mean, saying. It's I mean, it's even showing story. like perfectly. We we talk about anxiety and panic attacks, like the the the, you know. Pr I don't know what the fucking word is I'm looking for. Like the the moving forward with technology, like, like it said, progress, it just, evolution j j yeah. of, of just technological ways to communicate has like how it went from like the 80s to now is like oh, through the fucking it's roof. Exponential growth compa technologically to, in the last 30 years, and it's like oh, suddenly everyone needs an antidepressant. Every you know, well, I it's mean, like, it, it's. Everyone's constantly. There are amazing positives and amazing amazing negatives. Like there are people who legitimately are addicted to technology in a way yeah. that affects them like a, a fucking psychoactive drug would. Yeah. Like I mean, that's the kind of shit I I listen to um, when I'm at work. Like uh, psychologists right. who but, are who are specifically like say like internet rehab, mm -hmm. and they talk about like it is fucking proven. Yeah, it's serious. When you go on every time you go on Facebook, you get just a little bit more depressed because yeah. you're looking at shit. You're looking at someone's not real self having better, uh, ha having more fun than your real self. Yeah, you're looking at a so, simulation of your reality in a way that rep like represents you, like your dis digital representation is a simulation or a simulacra of your actual reality, and yeah. you're existing in two separate realities and hating your actual reality because your virtual reality doesn't reflect yeah. how you want it to look. And like, there's so many things that like are detrimental to you that like they start bringing you down yeah. and like destroying you and then this massive communication and anonymous communication where people can just be fucking awful to each other and just say the craziest shit and do the craziest shit and it's just rem it's destroying the human element of actually yeah. existing in reality and commodifying and destroying and perverting and every, how you and actually are everybody thinks like be because of shit like Facebook and Twitter and whatever and See, likes and all that and it's I, like you can be I now just, everybody can be special yeah. But but it's like that does that doesn't make you special, you know. I you use such general terms. And it's what like general everyone terms? is on antidepressants and everybody and I don't well, like that. I don't yeah, think no, I, I disagree with that. Like I like that comes back to like what we were talking on like the break, it's like we have more information on getting people yeah. that stuff. But like well, I, I, mean, I do understand where you're coming from where it's like more people are becoming negatively affected mentally because of like the advent yeah. of technology but growing as fast as it can. Like we're yeah. we're outgrowing ourselves to a point where like it's existentially fucking with us. Yeah. Like more so than ever, <coughs> technology is affecting so what, what, the human experience on what, a level that's like mentally not good. Yeah, what what's the way you ordered it that it's more negatively affecting yeah. your it, it's like it's a, for, it's a major detriment. It's a negative to your effect. Yeah, yeah, it's a negative effect. Like so, yes, not everyone is on antidepressants. Yeah, obviously, yeah. I'm. I'm. You know, yeah, it's I'm a hyperbolic statement. Yeah. yeah, but like, I get where he's coming from with that. This is like, it is negative. I mean, that, that that psychologist that was in the interview, he's like, he, he had a a patient who was like a huge celebrity that he couldn't name, and during the fucking um, session, she was saying like, I'm going to kill myself today. I know I am. I have a fucking gun loaded at my house. And while they're in the session, she's like tweeting on Twitter, "Yay, I just got out of my dentist appointment. Mm -hmm. Two two birds with one." And it's like, 
this person is so quote unquote happy. Yeah, because they have to present themselves yeah. as this thing. And that's why like some people want to add that open human element is like, you know what? Yeah, say you're sad. Because yeah. we're all trying to present like we're so happy and so pleasant and wonderful and doing so well. And like I know some people go, Oh, it's just begging for attention. It's like, no, sometimes it it it's okay to say I'm doing awful right now. My stress is fucking with me. My anxiety's killing me. My job is 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 hurting. Like I I'm just going through a bad shit because other people go, oh yeah, fuck me too. Yeah. Like I I just had a, a friend who, like you know I'm not gonna name not like, fuck me too. <laughs> no, no, no 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 no. <laughs> but like I had a friend post someone's like, you gonna know take what? my my negative my negative stress in my life and like the the anxiety has been so bad for me lately it's hard for me to leave the house it's hard for me to do this and it's affecting me in a way where it's like i just can't push through it right now and i just want to let everyone know this is why this is how i'm acting and how i'm affected and i'm not doing as well as this shit says and i just want you know like i love you and care for you guys all that and other people are going i've you know i've felt like this for the last month or so too it's great to see someone else's feel like you know it's not great to see but yeah. it's nice to know someone else is comforting. experiencing it's comforting it's- it it makes me realize my experience is human and it's going to be bad and I'm not isolated in this virtual cell of indifference or this virtual cell of hating myself and hating my reality to go, maybe everyone is experiencing the same alone bullshit because of the things we try to present to each other because we want to come off as everything's so great and all these shows are going wonderful and I'm so happy. It's like we all fucking get alone and terrified yeah. and anxious in our own <laughs> ways and our own intensities. And the more open we are with that, we can negatively com- we combat the negative element mm-hmm. of social media and the negative element of, of the virtualization of our reality yeah. and being able to recognize when we see it and go, fuck, we need a break or we just need to tone it down. Or maybe we don't need this yeah. right now. Maybe we can just stick with what we have for right now and stop fucking progressing and needing so much extra shit. Yeah. and take some goddamn time to be a fucking human for once. I just am always so reluctant to like cast stones at, at technology and and Facebook and Instagram and and Twitter and yeah, uh, just because it's the same rhetoric that was used, uh, like when television yeah, came no, out. Yeah, no, I'm not saying it's, it's all bad either. Like, sure, Facebook has brought people together, like in a way that has never been done before. And social right. media brings people together, well, and like it's amazing what it can do. Like, I'm not saying it's a hundred percent bad at all. Right, like. It has done amazing shit to bring information to people and connect people in a way that has never been done before yeah. in, in a sophisticated manner. But like with that, there are negative effects. Yeah, like, and, pe- all and people great don't gonna, people yeah. don't pay attention to the positive yeah. shit. Yeah, they don't. like you need to pay attention to the positive shit. Like yeah. Like, those things wouldn't allow the outlet for some people to have an outlet. Like, right. Like, there there would be voices that wouldn't be heard that were never heard before, you know? Like it's yeah. giving a platform. Well, I mean it's like people. like a like a simple question. I mean, for for anybody, for you guys or anybody else, like mm-hmm. don't you think so say I, I don't know, say I'm going through some shit like yeah, I'm having problems with my stepkid. I don't know what to do. If I'm chatting with you online, hey man, this is what's going on. I'm like I don't fucking know if he he could be in the middle of jagging off to some porn. He could be making some food. Like I don't give sure. a like, and so d- just getting out of that, giving that a break, and going face to face, like that is so much more positive than than sitting on a fucking computer. I yeah, agree. I mean, there, there's so, benefits. Yeah. and There's there's bad things. Like it's, well, it's, yeah. and it's like there's always going to be something good or something bad coming out of it. And yeah. I think we we have to be self aware about how we interact with it and yeah. how we uh, let it affect us and how we affect it. Right. And we need to be more proactive um, and being just aware of that shit. You know, knowing like, oh, hey, man, you know, it's just fucking affected me negatively right now. I'm going to take a break. Or you know what? It's doing some great shit for me. I want to be aware that this is doing something great for other people too. Yeah. And we need to celebrate that. But, you know, like <clears throat> with everything, you need to be fucking aware and conscious of reality in the moment happening to take all of that together. And you're referring to the individual, like yeah, you, and, Cameron, and, and me, Bill. Like, if it gets to the point where it is becoming like a detriment or uh, like these really bad, negative, like I'm getting the anxiety and the panic attacks because I'm tired of being like the fake person, yeah, that ultimately falls on me to be yeah. aware of that and to. 
yeah. disconnect myself or is it like facebook like promotes such or i i think ev- it it it's both it's individual and as a, a group like if you're seeing someone like I mean, there's just know, things that are out like, of your control. Yeah, too. there's things out of your control, but like <clears throat> the the level of self awareness you should have, like, should be able to go. You know what? I need to take a second. Yeah, because this is affecting me. I mean, it's it's. I, I mean, I don't mean to, cut you, but like before I forget, it's like the whole like Me Too thing when that came out, the Me Too movement, to the person on the side of who's a victim. It's like this is so great. This is an outlet. Yeah. To me, I was like, and and not to offend anybody, but this, it was like. This is so fucking stupid because how you were saying Facebook can have positive and negative effects. I'm like, this to me, I'm like, all those like super bro meathead, probably rapists who see this shit, they're going to be like, ha ha, you got raped, you know? And, yeah, and I'm I mean, like, that's, that's, like, that's like, the like, negative like, that comes from yeah. the, the great thing that like giving the voice to those people, there's yeah. got to be and those and fucking and shitheads who are coming out like trolling and being awful and being... Yeah horrible to these people like when they're just trying to come together in a trauma and i'm not like like criticizing the movement i'm just saying like to the point of how you're saying well it's not facebook's intention to make this negative but it could go that way it's unintended consequences like if you go i'm gonna take this ashtray and i'm gonna move it to that tape my intention is just to take this ashtray and move it to the tape if something happens in between that time that is negative that I didn't intend for. Yeah. Like, it's not my fault, but it could be a consequence of the thing I did. Like, it's, right. it's not directly saying that the Me Too movement invited that in no yeah, way. Yeah. But you could see that that was going to happen. Like, after it happened, you could go, oh, I could totally see that happening. Yeah. But, like, it wasn't the intention of people going, I'm taking power over the horrible shit that has happened to me and show other people that they're not alone in this. Mm -hmm. That was not the intention to go, hey, everybody who wants to talk shit to me, come talk shit to me. It was taking a public platform and going, I'm talking about this and I want to be powerful in that and and taking my victimhood and and what has happened to me and my trauma or people I care and love about and coming together and working on that. They weren't saying, hey, come fucking be a douchebag to me. But those douchebags saw that opportunity and yeah. took it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, you know, like it's it's unintended consequences that were not like correlated to the thing happening. But after the fact, you could go, yeah, no, I totally fucking knew that was going to happen. So yeah. it's, I don't know, from how you're describing it, it, it sounds very similar to like your friend who remained nameless, like voicing his or her opinion about like hey i'm going through a really tough time and it's just finding your audience and uniting humans and that's what the me too movement was about and then conversely it also united assholes i guess it united assholes like they like that my friend taking that step of going you know hey i'm just going through this shit like that was them trying to just call out to other people who are like, hey, I know other people feel like this and i feel like this and i want to say i feel like this so you don't feel alone and yeah i would say probably 99 percent of the responses were yeah that but there's always that chance where one person is be like ha oh, fuck you yeah because that person is an asshole yeah <laughs> right that's gonna happen we, it shouldn't and we're gonna fight against that but like i said it's gonna happen it'll always it's always it's always gonna end up yeah. happening yeah but like yeah. there's not a thing i'm just saying a rallying cry against facebook this is their fault yeah it's yeah, like no absolutely. it's humanity interacting in i an think imperfect it, it, system yeah it's, because it's humanity it's, is imperfect it's it's everything together because as far as technology i think like it's way harder how, how obviously because of once i say it, like my personal whatever Taoism and balance it's hard to fucking even tell personally like are you do you have an obsession with technology mm-hmm. when how do you fucking wake up and not go on your phone, not check your emails, not call somebody, not go online, well, yeah, it's, not it's, use the GPS? It's become know? so necessary <clears throat> because it's intergrained in society. Yeah. That's why, like, some people go, it's not an addiction. I fucking really need my phone. Yeah. Like, there are some times when I have my phone and it's just like, I'm literally doing nothing on here. Sure. I, there's nothing I'm benefiting from just scrolling through a thing, looking at stuff I'm not going to buy then, or and then just, it's like, like, consuming something. When do you tell yourself, this is an addiction? Yeah, and, like, at that point, it's go, yeah, I'm doing this because I, I fundamentally mentally need to do it. Yeah. Like, for some compulsive reason. But at the same point, it's like, you know, I do need to look at these emails. I knew I do need to respond to these group messages. I'm working on promoting the show or right. I'm communicating about performing. Or like, you know, like, that ties into, like, with being a comedian. It's like, if you don't have social media as a comedian or at least a website, 
yeah. you don't fucking exist. Mm-hmm. Like, I know comics who've dropped off of Facebook and they're just like, I don't know what's happening. I don't know what new shows are there. Oh, that show's right. done. This yeah, is not yeah. that thing. What's happening? Like, last That's year, I took a side. week off of fucking Facebook. And within that time, like, four people got called out for shit. A theater burnt down. Like, all sorts of shit <laughs> happened. And I didn't know for like three days any of this was happening. And it was just like, because I took one element of my life out. Sure. Yeah. It became like I just missed so much information, and that that fear of missing out, the FOMO, that's there. You're like, oh, I I, I could have had that if I had this in my hands. It's like, do I really need that? Sure. I ended up finding out anyway. It wasn't instantaneously, but I got the information. So what changed? Mm-hmm. But like, that's the efficiency, I guess. Yeah, it's the efficiency of the traveling of information, but also affects the ability to process that information, retain that information, and recall that information. Sure. I don't know. We got uh, we got down a weird hole there. <laughs> yeah, anyway. real, real, real weird tangent. Hey, was it cool, man. was it the Whip Theater that burned down? Is that yes, what you were, yes, yeah. that was the the Whip Theater. What, what right. happened there? Uh, they burned had, down. Yeah, just they had a fire in there and it did a lot of damage. And hmm. uh, I don't think they're even open up yet. They're still going through a bunch of shit trying to get that reopened. Um, they're wonderful people there. That yeah, was. Uh, I did a show there, and that is the first time I've ever performed and have been in a green room. So that was kind of like fun. Yeah, yeah I that guess. was one of my uh, favorite places to go up to, just for like mics and shows. Uh, got a lot of opportunities from those guys, and you know that that just like happened that week, and I was just like, yeah. God damn it! I, I remember I had a friend saying like, Dude, you left Facebook for a week, and comedy blew the fuck up. Like, what? <laughs> we need, need you. Come, we you need you back. It. And I was like, Really? You, do we? No, we don't. Like, <laughs> you we're are doing just fine with me here. You wait ten years from now, you weren't there. <laughs> you don't understand. Right. You were the glue that held this fragile world together. Yeah, I was the linchpin that held everything thing together <laughs> what's a linchpin it's uh, a very important crux part of a like a, a setting or structure that if pulled got it it's oh. like it's like a, a like the center beam for a basement or something like, got it like a Dude, load i don't know structure. how i get this shit mixed up like gerrymandering i thought a linchpin was fucking when you hot knife hash <laughs> you know and you burn it with a lighter <laughs> <laughs> all right <laughs> filthy phil <film. laughs> <laughs> anyway so uh, yeah. Anyway. So sorry about that. I just I have to defend technology because I no, think it's yeah. cool and it's like, great. I, I need to be called on my bullshit because sometimes like I just start rolling with it and it's like I become one of those extremes <laughs> and it's just like I hate it so much it needs to be destroyed. Yeah, and it's like I know. Okay, so I, I can say for individually, personally, yes, it does benefits for me to just take a break from. Oh Facebook. yeah, like sure, I, yeah. I sometimes just like I sign out, I delete the app, and it's like. I keep whatever I need to get communication. Yeah. But it's just like, I'm just going to take a couple days. I just need to not bombard myself with a bunch of stupid shit. And even if it's shit that isn't like whatever, that I would get, you know, an anger reaction out of, like I have at least like five people I can name who, who it's like, you know, it's depressing to watch them go down that Facebook hole because yeah. it's like, dude, life is so fucking great. I just got a pound of weed. It's fucking going awesome. Five minutes later, I just got fired. Life is depressing. Can somebody talk to me? And then 10 minutes later, I just got a new job. I'm going to smoke this weed right before I go. Wow, what a you know, day. You know, like, <laughs> shit. Man, like, that's a hell of a day. <laughs> like, yeah, you're obviously on Facebook all the time. Everybody needs to know those images. It's, I don't know, man. Yeah, no. I guess, I, I, and, and this might be a super fucking old geezer thing, but it's like there is room in today's society for. How about just mind your own fucking business? Yeah, you know? no, right, I totally right. get that. I, I get that. Or sometimes, like, do I really need to post this? Yeah. Like, there's a few times, like, I go to, like, just post a joke idea or just, like, post a thought, and it's like, do I really need to say that? No, there's no reason for me to say this n- unnecessary, irrelevant bullshit yeah. into a fucking giant abyss of information for the off chance that somebody goes, ha, 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 yes. Ha ha, okay. Oh, all right. Uh, oh, I don't agree with that. There's no reason for me to do that. So sometimes it's just like, I don't need to say this stupid thing about cum. I don't. I can keep that Don't to say that. I want you to, <laughs> no, there's I want you to, always a reason for cum jokes. To, no, I want you to say some intelligent things about cum. Oh, not, I don't know. No. <laughs> there's nothing smart I got to say about cum. <laughs> Fair enough. For Christ's sake, I'm calling it cum. (laughs) But isn't it expression and doesn't that make it all important, man? 
Uh, because you say it, doesn't that give it its worth and validity? Yes, I know, but also no. <laughs> just, let me have this thing where I just go, I'm not going to do it. All right, fair enough. Sorry. Because yeah, I do bad. like go on fucking just like tirades of just, I'm going to post this bizarre joke thing sure. over and over and over again and bombard people with it, like unnecessary bullshit. Sure. And it's just like, really? Did you need to post 13 times today? No. <laughs> Well, I think I think we were talking about how funny it is when you look at memories and you're like, why the fuck did I do that? Uh, what's What's even worse is looking at the list of people you have blocked and thinking like, why do I not like that person? Oh fuck, why is he on my mind now? Yeah, you know, the, yeah. She or she. Or no, I I I I love looking at some of the memories and go, oh man, hey man, remember when you like. 18 and you were a libertarian because you had no life experience outside of your hometown <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then you uh drastically changed your mindset again three years later and yeah then, then you started comedy and thought you were some avant-garde fucking genius who was what talking- you were no <laughs> i am now <laughs> <laughs> and modest to boot yes but i like, just watching the evolution of yourself and like you can get so pissed at yourself but at the same yeah. time you're like no, I'm a human being growing and changing. Like, I've had that conversation with people. Like, if you had met me 13 years ago, you would go, how did that guy become this person? Like, sure. how does that happen? And then you look at yourself and go, oh, my God, when I was 16, I loved this band, and I fucking can't stand them yeah. now. Psychedelic like, drugs. Yeah, that's, like, I know some people, like, happened. I have this tattoo, and it reminds me of how fucking stupid I was when I was 18. <laughs> and it's like, yeah, but I was that person. Yeah. So like, I'm not going to deny right. it. I'm going to be open about that person. I'm going to disagree or agree or just go, hey, maybe this was something I should have kept or sure. this is something I should definitely just be open and deny. And like, mm. it's just uh, the evolution of your person, I guess. Exactly do right. You, uh, I don't know if we're going on long. Uh, I was going to say, do, do you, I mean, it's it's you to call the shot whenever. But uh, oh, we can wrap up. Yeah, we can wrap up. Okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I've had I didn't realize of this. I, yeah. I love talking, so I forget yeah, about yeah. time, and it's then I look good. at time All and right. go, "Oh no, right. I yeah. have things I need to do." <laughs> so, does Filthy Phil have a final thought? Uh, Alliteration, you like that? Yeah, I love uh, that. I don't, yeah. Uh, I don't. Is that final with a ph? Uh, yeah. Naturally, oh, and right. thought with a ph. All right, yeah. Well, uh, I don't know. Um, I guess yeah. Find us on iTunes, Spotify. YouTube, right? Yeah, send and, us uh, an email. Che- check out my cover of Desiree, You Gotta Be, if you're having some winter blues, because oh there's are some <laughs> deep lyrics with a horrible fucking voice. I cannot sound like a beautiful black woman. But you can dance like one. I just realized <laughs> that was the first time I looked at the camera the entire <laughs> yeah, time. Yeah. It's just like a side profile of me just looking like fucking whatever I look like, and then it's just like, mm. hi, well, there's well, the rest <laughs> of my face. <laughs> that, that, no, that's good. We, we had some people who were like, <laughs> uh fucking whatever yeah yeah that's right <laughs> so cameron I mean, do you have any thoughts for us any any final words any any uh, promotion like um, I, yeah i um, would keep in mind that there's probably like a week or two turnaround yeah, yeah. so okay then um any, look out in 2019 uh 2019 i'm still booking uh look for me if you're uh, not in the chicagoland area i'm trying to come to places like portland and denver and shit uh, mm-hmm. west coast uh down south east coast um find me on twitter at two kids in overcoat uh, that's my handle that's um, a good one. on Instagram, Cameron underscore tells underscore jokes. Find me in the digital wasteland that we were just lambasting <laughs> the, like, <laughs> because I right. need your validation. Please. Uh, so like, one thing you can be addicted to. Yeah. Uh, just find whatever social media you like. Also like shots and giggles, live comedy on Facebook or on Twitter and Instagram. That's the show I run at the drunken donut. Um, we have our last show next week, but whatever, that doesn't matter. Wait, your last be, show, our, our last show of the year, okay. our last show of the year. Um, we're taking, are you hosting that? Uh, no, I am not, actually. Uh, our co-producer, Dave Sitko, is hosting. We got some awesome comics out, but it'll be after the fact of mm. this coming out. Um, but yeah, 2019 will be every fourth Saturday of the month at the Drunken Donut in Joliet. Check out Shots and Giggles Live Comedy. Uh, just fucking come see my shows and hear me scream about cum and gay shit. And uh, I've heard rumors that old Billy B. Schmidt is going to try and get on Shots and Giggles, so keep an eye out for that. Yeah, submit. Internet, you mean Internet Big World. Bully B. Uh, is big there an open B. mic beforehand, or is it a showcase? It's a showcase. Um, All right. There are open mics abound. Fair enough. Well, yeah. But some of them are so clicky, and like I don't even know anyone And in the Chicago. Burbs were one giant click, so come yeah. out to the Burbs and test your metal. That's beautiful. All right. With that, farewell yeah thanks for listening uh, our email is hear nothing see nothing say nothing at gmail without the g so hear nothing see nothing say nothing at gmail the g is still in the gmail <laughs> the g is there but anyway there you have it thanks for listening we'll catch you next time thank you good night bye
don't do that. 